Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the last video, I have installed the MHN or the modern Honeypot network server on Azure and showed you how to configure agents and, and look take a look at the alerts. In this one, we are going to install another Honeypot called the Teapot Honeypot, which, which has got a really, really nice uh, interface. And we're going to in install this, uh, this server uh, on Azure as well. And if you look at it, this is based on a Debian version of Linux, and it's got a lot of Dockerized version of Honeypots. Okay, like uh, we have already inst uh, uh, deployed Diona and Kauri uh, using our MHN in the last video, but you can look that this one supports even more. So what we'll do, uh, we'll come down to over here at the little little bit bottom this is by the way the the github page the, the official github page where you need to need to be so post install so this is where we are going to start okay uh, but before we do anything <clears throat> we are going to create one virtual machine in our azure environment i'm going to say create one uh, t pot RG is the resource group that I'm going to say and virtual machine name teapot and Debian this is what we're going to use is TVS is fine here uh, most of the options I'm going to go with the default but the image I am going to use Debian 10 Buster uh, generation 1 and uh, for this one I'm going to keep a little bit heavy memory 16 gigs uh, there is a memory requirement here somewhere listed uh, but I think 16 gigs should be uh, good enough for the part particular instruction that we're doing password I'm just gonna use uh, secure username and password And for ports, I'm gonna allow 84432 for now. And uh, really, okay, for the disk, uh, let's add one disk in addition to what I have. And uh, that's about it. Rest, I'm just gonna go with default. So review and create. And if the validation is successful, we will start uh, the deployment of this machine. So create and I'm gonna pause once the mission is done we're gonna go to the next phase okay this diploma is done so I'm just gonna click on and go to this particular Debian machine uh, get the IP address of the machine uh, open up a new terminal window and do SSH to the particular machine let's see if we can get there and uh, trust the server certificate and then Log into the machine, and there we go. So I am in here, Teapot Debian. So here, what I want to do first, let's see if I have Git or install. I don't have install, so sudo apt get uh, or app install git, and let's get the git installed because we're gonna use this git command to do a few things so I can copy this the whole thing should be copied we'll see so this my git is now installed so this is now cloning uh, let's see what I did okay it's cloned right here and now uh, it's saying that you need to run this command as root so if you look at it it not only it uh, cloned this uh, repository but in, then it did a cd to teapot ce iso installer folder and in here it's trying to install uh, and run this particular script install.sh i got to run it as sudo dot slash install and then hit enter now it's checked yeah you are root so now it's letting me install uh, this particular uh, particular package 
so now it's in service and it's going on I'm gonna pause when it comes to the next uh, pause and I'll, I'll restart the video again alright I think the installation is now done so I'm just gonna check quickly see if there is any error message or anything like that so I don't see anything is is like there is there uh, so disclaimer the script will install teapot and SSH will be pre-configured to TCP 64294 so you know that this uh, port I will need to open this particular port so let's see anything else no I think I don't need to do anything else right now so I'm gonna come back over here and what I would need to do is oh I did I made one mistake so what I, what I did I did install on SH but not as type user so it's just I hope that didn't mess up my stuff so I'm just gonna try to do this one more time <coughs> so this parameter is something that you have to pass okay so and you need to run this as sudo continue yeah yes and okay so this uh, is the interface that you're gonna get and so it's just kind of asking uh, required is 8 gigs RAM uh, and 128 gigs uh, and recommended is this and uh, it's gonna in install a whole bunch of different things I'm just gonna say okay uh, so now web user username you have to provide so I'm gonna say student and a password username student I say yes a password okay so repeat the password and uh, it's now actually doing so remember to uh, when you are there remember to add dash test type user so that will actually give you the prompts where you configured your web user and uh, the password okay and uh, again I'm gonna pause for a second and then I'll come back well let's uh, let's do a couple things here actually uh, first run so here you you can read this paragraph this installation they're talking about that requires very little interaction on the local and keyboard setting have to be answered for the basic Linux installation while the system reboots maintain uh, the active internet connection the teapot installer will start and ask you for installation type password for the tsec user and credential for a web user okay, so you got all that and then everything will be pre-configured automatically all docker images and other components will be downloaded depending on the network connection and the chosen installation type the installation may take some time with a 250 megabit download and 40 megabit upload uh, installation is usually finished uh, within 15 to 30 minutes so based on your uh, speed this may take some time so I'm gonna pause the video again and uh, come back when this installation is done the installation is still ongoing for me it's been probably three minutes or four minutes uh, at max but it's still going on and again I'll be back uh, once this is done and if you're noticing your window you see that uh, it's downloading a lot of docker images at the moment all right everyone it looks like this is done and for me it took probably 10 minutes or even less uh, to get it all done so I'm still still in our no the, the uh, so what happened it rebooting so it disconnected me and I'm back to my uh, local machine at the moment so I can get back so it's probably restarting so you see the SSH is now uh, connection refused messages what I'm getting so one thing we know that there are some ports that we need to open to be able to connect to that particular uh, machine right so so it says that uh, once the installation is finished the system will automatically reboot and you will be presented with the teapot login screen on the console you may log in with uh, some stuff so and again you see this is one of the ports that we need to open 
so that I can uh, talk to this particular server and uh, you can also so this is the admin UI okay and the web UI will be exposed to this port 64297 so we know that we have to do a little bit of work in our Azure networking site to open those ports so we can talk to this particular server so first let me just try to see login interesting now this is uh, give me a warning okay this is add the correct host key uh, to get rid of this message ssh keygen 52146 so that has to be my server ip address so let's just go back verify that is true so so far that looks like it is true do one more time before fixing this sometimes if this happens you have to go in and get rid of yeah I, I gotta I gotta remove this key and redo it again so just give me one second all right so there was on already a command it just gave me remove with this SSH key gen so I just ran this command right here it said that it up updated the known host uh, command SSH file <coughs> and then I what I'll try to do I'll try to run this command again and I expect no problem this time here we go so now you say yes again and uh, provide the password and we should be able to log in it didn't work interesting and it didn't work uh, either so I'm going to control C this one and I am going to pause and let me do a quick troubleshooting okay I think this is what happens so remember when we installed and this installation process we had this message before SSH will be reconfigured to port 64295 so that port uh, 222 is probably not uh, anymore serving the SSH service anymore so we're going to copy this one and uh, we are going to open up a notepad something similar text editor and in this text editor we're going to just type some port that we know that we need to open okay so go back in here and over here we know that we need this port as well so put it that in your notepad and uh, let's see we need uh, 64295 64295 okay so what we need to do we need to just go back to Azure go back to our virtual machine that is the machine that we created go back to the networking and then uh, if you look at the inbound ports you are port 22 44380 uh, so I'm just gonna add the inbound port and right now I'm gonna I'm just open this port to uh, anybody but you can definitely restrict the admin port to a particular admin UI or subnet if you like and provide this 626429 add this one and as soon as this one is added I'm also going to add this one uh, as well so that port is now added and add another one and that's the port and uh, over here test the port and click on add so what I'm gonna I'm thinking is gonna happen you will you will have this IP and you will be able to get to that uh, port just by going to your web URL and going to this one will take you to the admin and the other one to the web UI let's see if anything is running on that particular port it's trying to get there I still don't see anything just come back over here uh, where were we okay so it's saying okay I gotta use HTTPS your IP okay hold on so I also need another one I need uh, 64294 okay and if I need to do SSH look at that so this is how you need to uh, SSH to the machine 
all right so come back and add one more uh, port in there so this is the third port 294 that is also needed so that is the command and hit add and this is not doing anything yet and go with https see anything in there secure connection fail okay that is that's okay so it's still not doing anything but let's make sure that i have my ports all open up six nine four nine seven nine five all of them are open come back over here uh all hyper services are pre-configured and are starting automatically so probably that ui is not even up yet so it, you, you can you know wait just a little bit so we can try to go to four first let's see what is going on if that service is up and running and hit enter and there we go so we have now i know that that service is now running okay if you see this because that certificate that's uh, not from a certificate provider it's just a certificate that we created so you just click on advanced and then accept risk and continue and that should take you to the debian genie within xbox okay here is the username and password and here's the server okay wonderful proof login with your server user name so let's see what kind of username that that we are going to use it uh, user tsec or user let's see uh, or one of the post install method and password so choose during the installation <coughs> okay so what I'll do I'll first try my student and see if that's actually working and there we go so what happened so you SSH service that I that as I told you that's now uh, moved and uh, it, it's no longer running on port 22 it's now running on this port 64294 and it, you can get using the same username and password that you created for your virtual machine <coughs> to get to this window and this one got your system information your log storage containers account service all that kind of stuff in here okay really nice UI looks like <coughs> excuse me <coughs> storage and then uh, over here I have uh, containers uh, all kinds of containers in here uh, so really really uh, containerized application uh, accounts then uh, services then application software update terminals so really nice nice UI it looks like so come back over here so so you should also be able to do this so ssh uh, then uh, instead of tsec use your student ip so and then uh, go to that uh, particular ip to be able to go to the command line and to go to get to the ui we just need to change the port to, to uh, 64297 so let's come over here and let's just change this to Two nine seven, and again you do the same thing. Go to advanced, and accept the risk. And here uh, is looking for the web username. So here we also provided uh, during our configuration. And I think I have used the same username. Yes, I did. So now you are in, and this is the main interface of. Uh, your uh, teapot honeypot where you have the cockpit you have the cyber safe you have the elastic source head spider foot teapot give github link uh, security meter kibanas all kinds of stuff in here over here you have some other windows in here your settings down here so uh, so, so so really nice ui so over here you can click and kind of uh, play around see all those uh, you can go to the application you can click on any of them it will take you to the particular application and the elastic head is right here so come back right there kibana if you want to go this uh, will load the kibana interface and that is where you will see a lot of uh, you know grabs and stuff your person proof just to enable uh, whatever you like uh, in here 
really you have all those different uh, your data is not secure don't lose one bit security free with elastic okay so now I'm gonna dismiss this one uh, over here you see these are all of the different uh, 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 dashboards so like for example if I want to go to the Dione dashboard I can click on that one and it will take me to this honeypot dashboard okay and it is uh, gonna tell you what kind of attack is coming up and who is doing it what IP uh, if I go back and if I look at the covery which is uh, specialized for the SSH type, type attacks uh, if we okay we have some errors looks like in this one so you if you see this one you probably have to do some uh, troubleshooting in, in, in some of this stuff or configure it so but but your graph is going to show up in here okay go back to dashboard uh, let's see And uh, you can create additional dashboards. Looks like from here, create dashboard command. I'm gonna go back to this one and uh, see if there's anything else that I need to configure. So for here, make system your system is reachable through a network. And uh, you, there are some other other ports that you want to allow only from the trusted IPs and admin UI we have already opened that one open that one open that one so these are all pretty good uh, and looks like that's pretty much it so if you want to update there is some script that you can run uh, and over here we are already there it's just saying you the SSH and the web access that we have already done uh, 94 is where we are right now no, we are at 97 uh, let's see let's come back over here uh, then username password you can also do two-factor authentication oh this is just showing the SSH part the terminal is uh, they're showing over here uh, teapot landing page uh, this is where we were we went to the Kibana dashboard and uh, tools the following web-based tools are included to inform and ease up daily tasks so uh, there we go you have a whole bunch of stuff and tools that are all pre-configured and uh, just play around with this service and see uh, how you use it and how to configure it so in the next video that I do I'll try to go over uh, some of this in a little bit more detail I'm trying to keep this videos length as as little as possible and, and as short as possible so uh, go through it play it around and you should have a working copy of this uh, of this teapot honeypot network already available with you so just play around with it and see you know how everything looks like okay so Chuchirita, it already picked up 3182 number of events in here that's like unbelievable like we only in the last 15 minutes the time we install is already picking up so much of events so let's just come back over here look at a couple other engine next do we have anything here uh, yeah we do we have 244 events in there go back to dashboard uh, what about honey trap do we have anything there you know this one doesn't have anything yet I'm gonna go back to Kauri one more time see anybody else trying to hack in okay this is still uh, error so we need to figure out how to fix that one uh, let's just die on a, do we have anything in here no this one is still not uh, anything in here so more alerts will show up a, 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 as we go through it and if you look at it this is uh, more stuff in here there's overview the kibana dashboard analyze data in the dashboard you have uh, you can do a uh, search and find insights based on discover and you can also uh, plot geographic data so a lot of uh, very good and interesting features that are available in here so again play around with this uh, interface and see how you can use it to understand your network how people are attacking your system and be as secure as you can and if you like this video please give me a like subscribe for more videos and uh, good luck staying secure in the cloud thank you